Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing a project that I've been neglecting for a few years since I had this house. If you saw an earlier video, I actually put a soffit lights in the front of my house and those lights have been very great since I put them in. I just been slacking on putting them back here in my pool area. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be getting into my pool panel right here to pull the power and you do some wiring. That's what's probably been taking me so long. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some soffit lights around the back here. I'm not gonna add as much as I did last time on the front but I'm going to add enough to work back here in the backyard, so stay tuned. So the biggest thing that I've been holding me back was just running the power out here to get the power up to here to do the lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the power out of here. I'm going to run a conduit, a surface mount conduit up to there. I'm actually going to paint it to match the house. I'll probably paint some of this other conduit for the pool and everything while I'm at it. And then I'm going to put a floodlight up there to get rid of my solar lights here. I'm going to actually have a real floodlight with power. And I'm going to pull the power all the way across there and then through the back to get all the soffit lights back there. In addition, on the back side here, I'm going to pull a conduit from that corner up there all the way down here and I'm going to put an outdoor box right here to put a switch just for override and for manual control of these lights out here. I'm going to have that switch right there. I'm going to have it in a weatherproof cover since we are on an outdoor patio right now. As I said earlier, I'm not going to put as many lights in the back here as I did up front. What I'm going to do is I'm basically going to have one light right here, right down the center for this one. One light right there. I think the next one's going to line up with the window right there. And then one is just going to be on that blank wall. So that way I'm going to have four in the back here. I'm going to have one here on the side. And then over here on the side of the house next to my shed, I'm going to go ahead and have another one over there. So in addition to just running the wires for the lights for the soffit that I'm going to be adding, I'm going to go ahead and run a power right here for a floodlight so I can actually flood this area back here with a real floodlight on this spot. I'm going to go ahead and put an outlet over there near the soffit up there in case I have to plug anything up. That way we kill all these birds with one stone while we're doing this project. So I've got this 14.3 Romex right here to pull the two circuits, one for the actual recess lights and then one for that floodlight on the very end. I ended up getting 250 feet roll because it's actually cheaper to buy these 250 feet roll than it is to buy the shorter ones. It's only like $108 or $112 for this roll. In addition, for that power outlet, I just picked up some 12.2. Again, 250 feet of this is much cheaper than trying to buy the shorter versions if you guys been to Home Depot or Lowe's for this stuff lately. As far as the soffit lights and everything, these are the same ones I've been installing around my house for the last couple years. I still have six of these left right here, just enough to do this project. They're the same ones that I put in here on the patio a couple years back and then the ones up front. If you guys need any of this stuff, check out the links in the description down below. So I was able to measure in between this opening and get it centered right there. I marked the spot. I did the same over here, but then as we move over to the window, it was actually a greater spacing than it was between those two over to here. So what I did was I just marked the center line right here for the window and then from there over that way, I try to keep it equal distance. So over here, it's just going to be a little bit further apart than it is over there. But I don't think you're going to really notice just because that's an opening and there's just a straight wall. So we'll just have two over here. And I did the same on both sides, kind of center it between the house or the opening. So to drill our holes, I'm going to be using my hole drilling kit right here. I bought the whole set, even though I only really need the four inch one. I don't think I've ever really used any of the other ones, except maybe some of these small ones for some minor projects I did. But we'll go ahead, use this one right here. It's a little bit smaller than what we need for these uh, lights on here, but they will work just because it's a very flexible and open hollow metal that we're cutting into. So I usually just cut as much as I can, kind of move the edges and then tuck that thing in there. All right, we'll go ahead and drill the first hole. I've got everything ready, kind of center it up to where we want it to go and just have at it. Right there, pretty straightforward. Once we get that, we just clean up the edges a little bit and then test fit into the... Since I've done this a couple times already, I kind of know it fits, but for this video, we'll go ahead and just test fit it. So you want to go just tuck your little spring loads in there. It's going to be sharp, so make sure you have your gloves on. Yeah, and then just, I just tuck it in there and just make it fit. If it's a little bit too small, 
like I said, just bend the edges a little bit with gloves or with some pliers and you should be able to get it tucked in there pretty well. All right, our next hole is right here above the window. Again, you wanna center it right in the center here. So right here, we had a little seam that I had to work with and it ripped it out. So I'm about to get some tin snips to fix that. So what happened here was that this is a joint between two of these soffit pieces and it kind of ripped out when I was cutting it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and trim this down and then roll that thing back to where it belongs. So here's what I was talking about, that seam right there that fell out. So this is just two big pieces of the soffit that connect together. So see, I've kind of tucked it all back in, clipped it and made it look good again. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish the rest of the holes off camera and I'll show you the final result of that once we're done cutting those holes. All right, we went ahead and finished all those holes over here, over there, and then right there. And then we got the two on the sides right now. So we're pretty much good for the six new lights. So the next step is doing all the wiring, which is gonna take the most time. Actually, before I start wiring, one of the things I need to do is go ahead and take the end of this soffit off so I can install an outlet right there because I want to eventually put some string lights all the way out there and around the pool and back over. So I want to put an outlet right there, a weatherproof outlet. So I'm gonna have to do that. In addition, on this side, I mentioned earlier, I want to go ahead and put a outlet right here for a floodlight in case I want to put a floodlight for this area over here. So I want to go ahead and put that into there and get that all ready. So in order to get into these soffits, we need to take apart these nails right here right here and kind of roll this thing back under and that way we have access to get these things out and slip them out of the tucking groove that they're in right there same with on this side and a lot of times there's nails that also shoot this spot right here or these little spots right here into the top so you gotta pull all those nails out that way you get these things off We got up in here, luckily it was only one little screw or one little staple right here that kept it on. So, so we were able to pull it all out, but we'll go ahead and put that box right here for the new light and then start running some wire around here. So that's a pretty easy hammer right there, kind of right where we need it to be. Once the soffit comes on, once we put the soffit back, we can measure where the hole needs to be cut that out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire over to that side and then run the wire that way to the next one and then we'll continue on that way. All right, to make our wire pull easy, I'm gonna go ahead and use this little rod right here just to push it over so we can see it and then we'll pull the wire through. If you guys need the same tool, just check out the links down in the description to Amazon. So as you can see, we got the other side of the rods right there. I just looped it through with my cable right here or the wire. And we just go ahead on this side and just pull it through. All right, got it here perfect. We'll leave it here. I'm gonna go ahead, terminate the other side so we don't fall. But as you can see right here, we've got the tape to kind of hold it in place. I wanna get it into here so I can make the connection later. One thing you need to do with all this wire up here is if you have room, go ahead and secure it with a staple. So we'll go ahead and tap this right here with a staple into the... All right, we got that in there. Got enough slack for our wiring inside here. So right now you guys can see inside the hole up into the soffit. We're gonna do all the wiring inside, put that driver, and I usually tuck it right up above there, above the stucco, right between the roof line. You also have this bar right here, or this two by four, you could screw to if you wanted to. So we got our driver here, and it's got some knockouts on the side and on the edges. So what you wanna do is, we're gonna pop these knockouts right here, and then put a bushing in, so we could run the wires through. This is gonna be one of the ones on the end of the line that I'm gonna do outside there. So I only need to do one of these knockouts on here. So I just knock that out, put a bushing in, and then we'll do our wiring on this one. Luckily, this thing comes with all quick connects and push connectors, which is gonna make it easy. All we have to do is strip that wire back, push it in here, and we should be good on that. We got that knockout out, and we just push this bushing right through there. Once we do that, we're good to go on this, and we'll go ahead and 
wired up on the other side. All right, so we're over here on this one. Go ahead, I'm gonna strip this thing back and then splice the wires for what we need. The ground wire, which is a green, goes on your bare wire for the ground. Just that in, make sure that's connected. The white wire goes for the neutral. And then the black wire is the hot. So you wanna get that into there. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. Nice secure connection. Pull everything through. Same with this, pull it all through and just fold it back so you have a nice secure connection inside. Close the thing up, the lid for this. Make sure you select the colors. I'm gonna use 4000K for mine. This thing has several settings. There's a 5000K and then all the way down to 2700. So I'm gonna do 4000 for mine back here. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this back up into here. You wanna go ahead and just put it up on the soffit or on the CMU wall in here I have, and then you leave enough so we can put this other part in. And you see we have it inside there, right on top of that spot, right between the roof, on top of the CMU, away from this edge right here. So that's pretty good there. Once we put our thing in there, we just gotta make sure it's up there before we put it all back together. All right, so back up here, go ahead. Get your connector on here. It goes in and then it twist locks as a weather sealed connection. All right, so I got this on the other side. So we just go ahead and pull this through. So over here we made the junction. We go ahead and connected that wire over there that goes to that fixture. And then that's the one that's coming in right now. I just twisted the whites, the blacks, and the coppers together. The red is gonna be for my flood right here. I'm just gonna put a cap on that until I'm ready to use that one. I skinned it back, twisted it with some pliers, and then go ahead and just use the wing nuts right here. And in the future, when I hook up the next one, I'm gonna have to go ahead and share this neutral on this ground with the flood and this would be the hot for it so we'll go ahead and just cap all these off right now so i got the first connection done right there i'm gonna go ahead do the rest of this all the way back to the front off camera and then i'll show you guys what's the final result all right we'll go ahead wire this one up right here show you guys kind of the detail of wiring so this one pretty basic just strip it back three wires that we need on each side Our driver right here, get it all prepped up. You want to slide both of them into the same. Then once to slide it in to get some more room to work with. So first thing I need to connect is the reds because the red just continues on for my floodlight. So I just stick a red there into the quick connect. Make sure it pushes all the way in and you can see it through the clear. Once that's done, I usually twist these just to Make sure it gets a good connection. Slide that out a little bit. So I'll go ground next, which is the green to the bare. Again, I'm gonna go twist this up, just like we're doing wire nuts, just to make sure it gets a good tight edge. And then we match the whites and the blacks together with the whites and the blacks on the driver. Make sure <clears throat> when you push it through that it, you can see it'll go all the way in. Twist it and once we get that, we wanna do some wire management in here just to make sure it stays. So here's what it looks like inside the box once we're done. Just make sure everything's good. Then close the lid. Just make sure it snaps together once it's good. Put it back up in the hole and put it onto the deck up there in the edge. Yeah, once we get in that hole onto the ledge up there where it sits, go ahead and put the new light right into the hole and plug it up. 
So I ended up putting all this back together on the end here as you can see. I went ahead, put the drivers in over here. I wired it all up, stapled the wire to the little column that's up there, and then ended up putting it right on the deck between the CMU and the roof, keeping it away from too much moisture. I went all the way down, almost to the end. So once I get down to that end, I gotta open that up and start over there too. So to mount this box up there for the outlet I'm gonna be putting, I just use these L brackets from an Ikea tip over kit. Works perfectly to mount to the beam. So we go in ahead and mounted it right there to that beam using those L brackets. Lined it up right here perfectly with that. Now I gotta mark it and trim the hole out so we can actually have the face plate on here. All right, I was able to trim that out, measure it perfectly and got it in there. So now it's all ready. I just gotta staple this thing back up and then just wire this thing in off camera and we're good with this outlet. Went ahead and wired up my outlet. Remember the gold side is always the hot. The silver side is the neutral. You can see I use the side terminals to screw it in for a much stronger hold. I always do this with all my outlets. Also, a little trick here, make sure you pick up one of these Milwaukee bits right here that are designed to go into that hole. It's a flat head and kind of a Phillips gives you much better torque to tighten that down. This is much better than trying to insert it in there that the lazy electricians always do. So put us all back together. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that hole in there with some silicone just to seal it up since I don't have a watertight seal on that. I'll just fill it with silicone. Should be good enough for this. All right, got this thing in, sealed up, tied up everything nice and clean. So we got this nice weatherproof door. So we're good here for that outlet. So over here, we've got the sub panel for the pool pump where we're gonna be pulling our circuit. We have a 20 amp and a 15 amp for the lights. The 20 amp is actually for this outlet right here. If you guys haven't seen that video where I show you guys how to install this outlet, go ahead and check out that video. We show how to do this. Plus we install the outlet for the soffit up front for like Christmas lights and all that. So over here, we're gonna be pulling our conduit down under here with some flex, some weather type flex just like this. And we're gonna pull the conduit up the side of here all the way up to the soffit up there as you can see. But in here, first thing I need to do is actually relocate this one to the one of the knockouts on the inside so I can use this one because it's closer for my angle. So this one's gonna be the outside so I can actually go around it over here more because I need to go on the inside for my new conduit. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be picking back in off this right here, this breaker to pull the power up there. What I need to do is create a actual pigtail right here to go into here because these are Siemens breakers. So they, they don't have double tap capabilities like the square D's do. Since they don't have double tap capability, I actually have to do that pigtail to connect the wire here. In addition, I'm gonna run another wire onto the other side to use the control that's inside the control panel right now. So over here we got the pool pump panel which is actually the control panel but down here we have a lot of electrical going on. We have our lighting which is the yellow one that goes into here. I'm going to actually pull one wire over here. I've got this Z-Wave controller right here that I've, that I've had in here just ready for my next project. I'm going to use that to control my floodlights and have that activated by my door and also by my app. I'm going to repurpose one of my switches like a double tap on the smart things to control this without a physical switch. So I'm gonna use that relay to do that. But yeah, I'm gonna pull it over to here, pull that circuit back around to do that over here. So that's what we need to do. As you can see, I installed this outlet here a while back to get some power over here also. All right, so over here, I ended up moving that off camera, like I said earlier, over and I punched the hole out or I reused that other hole for the new conduit and flex I'm gonna be using. I already fished through the 12.2 and the 14.3 that I'm gonna need over here for the new circuit that I gotta pull up. For the 12.2 for the outlet I'm gonna add to the top, I actually piggybacked it off this GFI right here. If you guys didn't know, you can piggyback off the GFI so that way everything down the line from this GFI is protected by this particular GFI. So if you look on the back, there's two terminals. There's a main terminal on top and then the basically dependent terminal or the protected terminal on the bottom. 
So I went ahead and installed my switch box over here off camera. I actually bent the conduit to make it look professional using my heat gun right here. I bent one edge, let that cool down, bent the other one and it fit right in. I pulled that conduit all the way up to the ceiling, which is gonna be on the other side here, which is where all our wiring is gonna happen. So I'm gonna pull a wire down here for the switch leg for these lights. So I'm back here, I ended up installing this box right here off camera. As you can see, I just removed the soffits like I did throughout this video. I notched that little spot right there on the rail just to get that in. I'm about to notch the actual panel once it goes back into there. But the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this box on the back side here to do my junction up here with all my different wires, my different paths. We're able to pull everything up all the way up there to that junction box. I need to go ahead and just glue everything, make all the final terminations, pull my switch leg on the back side, and we're pretty much done with the wiring on here. Sorry I'm not showing much more detail on this, but I've got a bunch of other videos where I do a bunch of wiring. If you guys need to do wiring, but for this project, I'm probably taking way too long by now. I just want to go ahead and just wire this up and finish so it. After wiring everything up, I realized that the box I put in was too small. So I had to get a double box right here and a four by two inch tall to fit all the wires I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to have to go ahead and fish everything through here. I did the calculations already and I'm going to be right at the 30.2 or 30.3 cubic inches that this thing holds for the wires I'm going to put in. Now we got everything back in on the two boxes much more code compliant now, a lot more room inside these boxes to do all the wire nuts and everything. With both these setups right here, we're right at the 30.3 limit. One of them is like 0.05 away and the other one maybe like one or two away. So this is the maximum you could put in these boxes right here. All right, here's what the final product looks like at full brightness right now. As you can see, it lights up the pool back here and all this area pretty nicely when we use it during the summer. Even off to the side here, you can kind of see the side one working pretty well over here. And then we'll go to the other side and see how that looks behind the shed. Also right now, you can see that corner floodlight working along with those lights. I'll go ahead and turn off the soffit lights so we can see what the floodlights look like. Right now, we just got the floodlights by themselves. You can see it illuminates everything nicely over here to the playground and everything. And over here by our pool panel where we did all this work on this side with that floodlight. As you can see, it illuminates the pool pumps, all the side yard, the trees, and the fence area on this thing pretty nicely. So right now with all these lights, we have plenty of security around the property and plenty of light when we need it. This right now is dimmed down to like 10% or maybe even 5% and it still works fine on that dimmer. As you can see, not much light out here, but this is probably what I'm gonna keep it on at night just for ambient lighting in this dim mode just to get some light in the back here. Hey guys, thanks for following me all the way to the end of this long video on getting this project done. If you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a video. Remember guys, for all these different DIY projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I wanna thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time.